Hey guys, this is part two of our evangelism training, the very training I give from the five to six o'clock hour when we have our nights of prayer outreach. And we've gone through in the last video, what do we do with our fears? We've gone through how do we handle a bad experience? We've gone through how do I determine where to go? And we've gone through ways of follow up. You know, how do I follow up with these people? I forgot to mention in the last video, other than writing down prayer requests, it's also helpful, you know, if you do get a number, if you, you do get contact information, to start uh, building a relationship with that person. We're very intentional. We, we'd rather not just leave them with the gospel and go. We'd, we'd love if the Lord provides an opportunity to continue with him. But something that I want to address now uh, is how, how I can begin conversational segues. In other words, in practicality, what do I do when me and, and my friend who's come with me, what do I do when I get to the door? What do I say in practicality? Maybe I'm not afraid. I just, I don't know how to get the words out of my mouth. So I'm, I'm going to display what a conversational segue looks like for me as I've been doing this over the years. So I knock on the door, person answers the door. And the first thing I say is something like this. I say, hi, how you doing, sir? Hi, how you doing, ma'am? Thank you so much for, um, for opening your door to us. We just want to have a brief moment of your time to be upfront and to be honest with you. There's only one reason we're here. We think right now the times in our country are really difficult. Uh, the times in America uh, are, are really tough on everyone. And I try to remain vague because I don't know where everybody's coming from. I'm just assuming, you know, that there's going to be struggles in, in this life that our community is having. At this point, most people start shaking their head. And I say, and it's because of these difficult times that we just feel led as Christians, you know, to go and start praying for people in our community. So we don't want anything from you. And, you know, we apologize if we're interrupting your night, but we, we're just here because we're offering to pray for people in our community, and we want to know if there's any way we can pray for you. Now, a few things happen as we say that. First of all, we're telling the people that we're acknowledging this is random. We're acknowledging maybe this is a bit uncomfortable. We're acknowledging that maybe we interrupted their dinner. We're acknowledging that we should probably get their permission and be upfront and honest. There's no gimmicks, there's no games, there's nothing we're trying to trick them with. We're not, we don't have a clipboard with a bunch of random survey questions and then we finally get down to spiritual questions. It's like, hey, we know you don't have a lot of time. We're just here to pray for our community tonight. So when you ask for people's permission, typically that gives them the, the place, the ball is in their court. They have to respond. If they say, yeah, sure, no no problem. Then you know you've probably got another five minutes ahead of you. If they don't give you permission and they're still a little hesitant, that's your cue. You've probably got 30 seconds. If they say, no thanks, I don't want prayer. We're going to get back inside here. I always stop just one last time and I say, hey, sir or ma'am, look, thank you so much. Uh, we're sorry to bother you. If there's one last thing I want to tell you tonight, it's Jesus absolutely is in love with you and He's forgiven you of all of your sins because he died on the cross for you and he rose again. He, he loves you so much. So please consider that tonight. And sometimes they'll say, okay, thank you so much. And other times it actually causes them to come back and it, it, it continues the conversation. So a brief 10 second gospel message as they're walking out, if that happens. But uh, again, we ask for their permission. We acknowledge that it's a little bit odd knocking on their door. But the biggest thing we try to do is just communicate sincerity. The reason why I'm here is not to get a notch under my belt, you know, not to take a log book of how many names I talked to tonight. The reason I'm here is because I believe that the Holy Spirit of God can open a door for the heart of the person that I'm going to their house. So uh, anyways, just keep those things in mind. It's also important too to understand where our eye contact is when we're first knocking on a door. And this isn't just at somebody's house. This could be anywhere in the community. I do my absolute best, especially if I'm dealing with someone who's shorter than I am or who is sitting down in a chair, depending on the circumstance. I do my absolute best to never, ever, ever get above them in my eye level. Uh, in other words, if they're sitting in a chair, let's say at a corner market or in a coffee shop, I'm actually going to take a knee. I'm going to walk up to them, take a knee, shake their hand, acknowledge that it's awkward, out of place. Thank, thank you so much for letting me stop. Hey, I just had you on my heart. I had to talk for, to you for a minute. But however I begin the conversation, I make sure that I'm at eye level or beneath them in eye level. I'm never looking down upon them because it communicates kind of something that's domineering. If there's a front porch that they have, sometimes if, if I'm taller than they are, which isn't many because I'm pretty short, 
um, or whatever the case is, I try to take a step down. You know, if there's steps leading up to their house, I try to take down a step. That way they see they're the ones in charge. Eye contact is important. Also, you know, you don't do this with your eyes, but be bright eyed, be hopeful. Show that there's joy on your face. Wear a smile. Your, your body language means everything. Um, you know, if I were to stand here like this when they open the door, it, it kind of communicates like an offensiveness. It, it looks like I'm guarded. It looks like I've got an agenda and like a purpose. You know, if I've got a book in my hand and I'm here at their door, it looks like I have an agenda or something else other than them. Uh, you know, if I've got a bunch of flyers in my hand, like those door hangers I was talking about, if I'm just holding it in my hand, it looks like I want to give them something. That's why I keep them in my back pocket. The best thing I want to do is just have a natural body language. Sometimes I, I want to put my hands behind my back if I'm standing at a far enough distance and I want to be leaning backwards. I, I want a body language that's communicating that I'm at rest and I'm at peace. But I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to lean in. I'm not going to get too close to their door. You know, COVID is another thing to think about. All of these things, body language, just like a common sense towards body language and how people are reading your face and how much you're smiling as you're speaking with joy and passion and enthusiasm. These all make a difference in conversational segues and in how they're viewing you. Um, so again, be upfront, be personal, have bright eyes, smile, ask for permission, acknowledge that it's a little bit awkward, tell them that you're there to pray for the community because times are rough. These are healthy conversational segues. And it's all, I've also found a lot of success with this last statement. Looks like I'm going to be making a part three to this. But I've found a ton of success with this statement. I've been using this statement for about 10 plus years now. And by the way, this statement's not a gimmick. This statement's always true. If the Lord is stirring my heart to someone in the grocery store, in the coffee shop, or you know, just as I, I was walking down the street and I felt led to go to the house, the first thing I can do is I can go up to them and my purpose literally belongs to this. It's saying, you know what? I couldn't help it, but sometimes in the midst of my day, I just, I pray to the Lord and I, I talk to God and I just pray, you know, throughout my day. And for some reason, when I went by your house, when I went by your table, when I walked by you here in the grocery store, I just couldn't help, but I started to pray for you. And people actually take that as being very genuine. People actually respond really, really well to that. Uh, I hope I don't take too much of your time, but I was just praying for you back there and want you to know that God loves you. Uh, where are you at in your walk with the Lord? Is there any way I can pray for you? Things like that. But telling people that you genuinely had a heart stirred for them to pray for them almost always works. So again, these are conversational segues. This is part two of the training. Uh, I hope that you guys get a lot out of this. God bless. I'll post part three in a minute.